Okay, so when we study forces in space in, in a three-dimensional system, we can usually define the force vector by two different points, A and B, and those labels are, of course, arbitrary. They can be any two points. But for the sake of this video, we're going to say that point A has coordinates x1, uh, y1, and z1. And then point B is going to have coordinates x2, y2, and z2. Now, to be clear, these two points in space do not necessarily have to be the starting of this vector and the ending of the vector. They can simply be any two points along the same line of action of that force. And the reason being is these two points give us the orientation of this force, but the length of this force is already known. It's the magnitude of whatever F is. So if F was 250 newtons, then the length of this vector is going to be 250. And in three-dimensional space, we use the uh, unit vector lambda to describe the orientation of this force vector F. Okay, so to figure out how we can use lambda to determine the three different components of this f vector using these two points that orient that force, I'm going to look at this diagram right here off to the side. So imagine for a second that we just kind of forgot about this force vector f, and instead we drew another vector. And this vector would start at the tip of or the tail of this force vector f, and it would end uh, somewhere, somewhere over here. So in this case, this point right here would be our A point, and this point right here would be our B point. Now, I didn't have to make this blue vector start at the tail of F, but in this example, it is. Remember, these two points, A and B, can be any two points along this line because they are just going to be used to figure out our lambda orientation. Okay, so again, for 10 for a second, we just kind of forgot about this F force, and instead we're focusing our efforts on this blue vector right here that starts at some point A and ends at some point B. Now, I'm going to draw a three-dimensional box around this blue vector so it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little bit more of an orientation of which way this force is acting as well as the orientation or the locations of these two points. A and B. So if I have this box drawn around this vector A, B, we have our starting corner right here and the ending corner up here. So along the sides of this box, I can say that this side right here has a distance of dx. I'll just call it dx. That's the distance from a to B, those two points in the x-direction. And similarly, this, this distance right here uh, in the vertical direction is going to be dy. And finally, this distance right here between the two points in the z direction is going to be appropriately dz. And our unit vector lambda is going to, I'll just draw it here from point A, and it's going to have a magnitude of 1, and it's going to be oriented on the same line of action as this blue vector. So this right here is lambda. It's our unit vector lambda. And so you can sort of see that this blue vector right here, this blue vector, which I will call a, B. So this blue vector right here has three components. It has this dx, dy, and dz component. And those, again, are just the distances between points A and B in the X, Y, and Z directions, respectively. And so this uh, vector AB can be written out in terms of its components, dx in the I direction, plus dy in the J direction, plus dz in the K direction. Okay, so what are these scalar quantities dx, dy, and dz? Well, those, again, they are the distances between those two points, A and B, along those appropriate axes. However, you have to remember that dx, dy, and dz are the distances between the ending point first and the starting point. So in this case, 
the ending point is B, and the starting point is A. And so dx, I can write here, dx is equal to, well, what is the distance in the x direction between points A and B? Well, if A and B have these coordinates, then I can say that the ending point uh, of x, in, uh, or for point B in the x direction, is x2. And then for A, it's x1. So dx is going to be equal to x2 minus x1. And similarly, I can say that dy is going to be y2 minus y1. And then finally, dz is z2 minus z1. And so again, don't just look at these three formulas and just uh, blindly plug in x2, y2, z2, and then you know z1, y1, and x1. You have to understand that this is the ending of the vector. Uh, in this case, it happens to be point B. And this is the beginning of the vector, which happens to be point A. And so again, this is end minus start. And so these formulas right here give us distances. And those values are these scalar components, dx, dy, and dz. Now, to find lambda, to find lambda, by definition, we can take this ab vector. So we can say lambda is equal to the ab vector divided by the magnitude of that line, the magnitude of that blue vector. And so the magnitude is just AB without the little arrow on top. Now, we already know what AB is, right? We figured it out right over here. And so I can write this as DXI plus DYJ plus DZK. Okay, awesome. So then that's divided by AB. Now, what is AB? AB this term right here is the magnitude of this AB vector. And if we look back at this box that I've drawn, I know that this side is dx, this side is dy, and this side is dz. So the magnitude is going to be the length of the vector, the blue vector that we've drawn. So that magnitude is going to be this distance right here between A and B. Well, if this is dx, and this is dy, and this is dz, what is this? Well, that must be just d. So this denominator is just going to be the distance d, the absolute distance between a and b. Okay, so how does that help us? Well, remember that off to the side, that whenever we have a force in three-dimensional space, in this case I'll just call it f, that is going to be equal to the scalar quantity of f times the unit vector lambda. And so again, this is the scalar quantity and this is the unit vector. And so if we figured out that lambda this is this giant thing over here, we can take this value of lambda and we can plug it into this equation right here. So f essentially becomes f times that giant quantity. Okay, so now that we have this equation, what I'm going to do is expand it out. So I'm not going to simplify it, I'm going to expand it. So f becomes, well, we take this f, a scalar quantity, multiply it by dx uh, times i, and then divide that by d. So we get something like this. We get f times dx over d times the unit vector i, and then we can do the same thing for y and z. So this becomes f times dy over d times the unit vector j plus f times dz all divided by d times the unit vector k. And so why did I write it out this way? Well, if you look closely for each one of these three components, you again have a scalar quantity and a unit vector. So this is the scalar quantity, this is the unit vector in all three of these terms. And we know that this entire component right here is equal to the x component of this force vector f. So down here, I could say that, well, f of x, the scalar quantity of f of x is going to be equal to just this scalar quantity right here. And that is f times dx over d. 
And then we can do the same thing for Fy, and then finally Fz. And there you go. If we know two points A and B, so if we know these two points A and B, we can eventually figure out what the x, the y, and the z components of this force are if we take the magnitude of F and we multiply it by a ratio of dx over d, or dy over d, or dz over d, depending on which axis or component that you're looking at. And that's about it. That's how we use lambda to figure out the force components of any force in space.